Welcome back to M. Night Shyamalan Week here on the channel. The last video I did was the review for Knock at the Cabin. So today we're going to be ranking all of M. Night Shyamalan's movies, almost all of them. So I didn't include his TV show Servant because that is something I haven't watched because I don't have Apple TV. I also did not include his first two movies, Praying with Anger or Wide Awake because they're not horror movies and they're not very well known and I haven't seen them. I also did not include Stuart Little, which is written by him, in case you weren't aware. M. Night Shyamalan wrote Stuart Little. So I will be working my way from his worst movies to the best movies, and obviously, as you can tell by my sweatshirt, this will probably be a little bit controversial. I know I say that all the time, people are like, it's not that controversial. I genuinely think this rating and this ranking will be controversial with my choices, just given the reception that I know some of his movies have and the ones that I personally gravitate more towards. If you're a fan of the channel, you know exactly what's probably gonna be my top three. And obviously the sweatshirt kind of gives it away. So. so I actually have four categories. So it's kind of like a tier list as well. The first category, completely unwatchable, horrible movies. Second category, we have the meh category. They're just okay. Some of them are rewatchable, but they're just very, very average. Then we have his good movies, the ones that are decent. And then of course we have iconic, the iconic M. Night Shyamalan movies, which are my personal favorite, which keep that in mind. This is my personal ranking. I say that every time, but I know people are gonna have some thoughts. I would love to hear your ranking of M. Night Shyamalan movies though down below. So make sure you leave a comment. Tell me your favorite and least favorite M. Night Shyamalan movies. First up, most unwatchable movie of them all, famously Avatar The Last Airbender. I tried watching this in its entirety um, in order to do this video because it's something I never saw it. I never watched it because of how bad it is. And I know it's not for me. Like I know I would hate this movie. Obviously this is an adaptation of the Nickelodeon cartoon from the 2000s. Um, never watched it personally. Ryan was like, you should watch the at least one episode of the cartoon so you can get a feel of what it's supposed to be like and I will eventually um, but that's just not for me the the story the the cons it's just I'm not a fan of Avatar it is famously his worst movie for a reason universally hated by many I know probably there's an audience out there for it I don't know I will say the other night it was the witching hour for my baby and the only thing that would calm her down was this movie like she, I put her in front of the TV and she watched this movie and she was totally fine. She's not even two months old, but for some reason, the flashing lights of the Avatar, she was a fan and it calmed her down. It's literally the only thing, like nothing was calming her down. And then she saw this movie on the TV. So there's that, babies love it, uh, me not so much. What's funny about Avatar is how much money they spent on marketing and advertising. So their budget was like 150 million, I believe, and they spent 130 million on marketing, which is almost as much as the entire movie budget. And because they didn't really make a profit on this movie because of how much money was spent on it, the two sequels that were intended for this movie were not approved, which is probably a good thing for M. Night Shyamalan's career. The show creators really didn't want this to happen. And then when they found out M. Night was the you know writer and director for the movie, they weren't thrilled about it. All of their creative input was thrown to the wayside. So they really didn't have any creative direction in this and didn't want it to be made at all. I think this is just random random, a random choice for M. Night to do. He does do some projects that are just, they feel random for him, given his career background. But that is something I respect about him is he will take on anything. He will take on a project for passion, like a passion project, not just for money. And this was his first time doing a movie that wasn't based on an original story. And I genuinely think people wouldn't have such an issue with M. Night Shyamalan if it weren't for this movie and maybe this next movie I'm gonna talk about, which is his next worst movie in my opinion which is After Earth from 2013. This one, I almost did. I could still do it if you want it. I almost did an entire video on the aftermath of After Earth because this movie is fast. I spent so long researching this movie for no reason as it's playing on the TV. I'm like going down a rabbit hole for this movie. It is fascinating. If you want to go down the rabbit hole, go read the trivia for this, read the Wikipedia page, the reception, the controversies. It's a lot. This is an apocalyptic movie set a thousand years in the future and stars Will Smith and Jaden Smith as father-son duo. Now this is co-written by M. Night. He kind of did the screenplay for this, but the original story is written by Will Smith. And M. Night Shyamalan kind of did Will Smith a favor. Will Smith really wanted to work with M. Night in some way and so they both worked on this movie and I have a feeling M. Night kind of knew it wasn't going to be great as they were going along with this. Will Smith was responsible for most of the directing especially of Jaden Smith so this is really Will Smith's passion project and I hate that M. Night is attached to this because it doesn't feel like 
any of his other works. Like, it's, you don't feel his input in this at all. Every single person who worked on this movie disowns this movie. Will Smith says it is the most painful failure of his career because his son was attached to it. And it's just tragic, honestly, the reception. Like, I feel bad for Will Smith for having to go through this. Um, obviously, M. Night claims it's his worst movie. Maybe if M. Night had a little bit more input into this, it would have been better. I actually really enjoy Will Smith's original idea for this movie, which was a father and son are on a camping trip or they're going to go camping and then they get into a car accident and they get stranded and then the son has to go and find help for his father who was injured, which is similar to the storyline in this in After Earth, but they had to make a big budget sci-fi green screen CGI for no reason. I think the camping trip and just the simplicity of a story on the side of the road where a son has to find help with the budget that they had would have been great. Okay, next up, this is the last movie that I consider completely unwatchable, and that is Lady in the Water, another famously bad movie from M. Night. Now, this is a 2006 fantasy movie, which follows a man who saves a woman who he later finds out is actually a character from a bedtime story and has to help her get back to her story. This is such a drag of a movie, the most boring movie on this list. It is completely unwatchable to me so painful to get through. I bought the DVD at a Goodwill because I thought, mm, M. Night Shyamalan sounds good. I usually like everything that he does. This movie is the most boring movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Maybe not literally, and I will say this movie is better executed than the other two, which is why it's in third from last and not last place, because I will definitely never be re-watching this, um, because it's better executed. The you know, general direction is better, the cast is good, the acting and everything like that, but it's such an effort to get through. So this movie had a mysteriously fairly large budget of 70 million, which is due to the fact that they built an entire apartment complex and half a city block just for this movie. And that's due to the fact that M. Night really loves to work close to home. He loves to work in Pennsylvania and specifically wanted to make this movie no farther than 45 minutes from his house. So they spent 70 million doing that. And M. Night Shyamalan has a much bigger role in this movie compared to his smaller cameos that he usually has in his other movies, which he's a good actor. If you want to see him in a bigger acting role, then watch this movie. But to me, unwatchable. I can't, I can't do this movie. Now we're on to the meh category. The, they're okay, not terrible, but they're just, compared to the others, they're not standouts to me. So next up we have Glass from 2019. Now this of course is the last of the Unbreakable trilogy, a direct sequel to Split, following David Dunn who uses his powers to track down Kevin Crumb who has 24 personalities. Now this trilogy is fine, it's entertaining. Uh, this is definitely the worst of the three I would say. Um, I'm not sure why it was so bad considering I really enjoyed Split, spoiler for, you know, in the future ranking. Um, I enjoyed Split and I enjoyed Unbreakable. I like that he used old footage from 2000 from Unbreakable um, to kind of connect it together and you know do the flashbacks and everything like that but overall this is just more disappointing very average movie in my opinion if you've been subscribed for a while you know what the next movie is going to be and why I dislike it and I can't tell you why I dislike it because it has to do with the twist uh, and that is The Visit. Now a lot of people love this movie. Uh, I think a lot of people would say it's one of his better movies. It is a found footage movie that follows two siblings that visit their grandparents for the first time when they start noticing really strange behavior from them. Now this is a classic M. Night Shyamalan movie. I think it's his lowest budget movie, but it is definitely my least favorite twist out of all of his movies. There were actually three cuts of this movie made, one pure comedy, one pure horror, and then the one that we see that the viewer watches, which is somewhere in between. So this one does have a lot of comedy in it. Very hit or miss for some people, I would say. And he actually used the money that he made from After Earth. I'm surprised he made money on that one, um, to budget this movie to produce it himself to kind of regain creative control again, which I don't blame him. It's an attempt to kind of get his reputation back after making After Earth. And I feel bad because every movie since The Village had been nominated for a Razzie. So 2005 to 2015, that decade was just a rough time period for M. Night Shyamalan. Like I said, I can't get into why I specifically dislike this. Um, if you know, you know. But if you don't, I'm just, it's the twist. It's the twist. I don't like it. So the next movie I'm including, but he actually is not the director of, but I wanted to include it because it is a horror movie and he does have creative input on it and he is the writer and producer of it. And that is Devil from 2010. I do own it. Um, 
but it's just okay. This is probably the most rewatchable out of the meh category. This is about a group of people who are stuck in an elevator who have to kind of face their own transgressions and realize that one of them, among them, is not who they seem to be. This is a combination of a trapped movie and a supernatural movie. To me, it's just okay. It's just okay. I wasn't a huge fan when I first saw this. It is rewatchable. I, like I said, own it because I do rewatch it every now and again. It definitely has like the unexpected aspect of a classic M. Night movie, even though he's not the director, but you could tell he has input in this. It still feels a little bit predictable to me. Like I'm pretty sure I was able to predict what was going to be happening in the end, but it still didn't take away from the enjoyment factor. But again, it's just a very average movie, especially when I'm comparing it to all his other works. And really the fun of Devil is the clues and connections of the characters as the movie goes on, not necessarily the reveal at the end. Next up should be in the good category, but I'm going to include it in May because it, it really it really depends on my mood with this one and that is The Happening from 2008. Again, famously hated by many, many people. This is M. Night Shyamalan's first R-rated movie and he set out to create a good B movie. That was his effort and I think that was executed. I think this story is really unique and feels very apocalyptic in the way that Bird Box feels where there's a plague that is driving people to commit suicide. I think it's a very interesting story. And again, love the twist in this one. I think that's the reason why people don't like it is because of the reveal and what is actually happening. But I think it's really clever. Again, feels very classic M. Night Shyamalan, which is definitely evident in the reception of this movie, given that it is very hit or miss. Mark Wahlberg regrets working on the movie, but he was just happy to not play like a criminal or a cop. And Zoe Deschanel said that it was one of her favorite productions to work on and people just don't really get it. <laughs> I do hate the title of the movie. I think M. Night is not the greatest at titling his movies. I really don't like a lot of <laughs> his titles. Um, they're not very creative by any means. So that's one critique. It's neither here nor there. I feel like that doesn't really impact the movie itself, but just thought I'd throw that in there. Next up, we are on to the good movies, his solid movies that you can argue are decent. You know, most people like them, I think. So next up, we have Unbreakable, which is from 2000, his first in the trilogy. Um, I'm not sure. I think he set out to make a trilogy or at least to make a sequel with this movie. Now this is a superhero thriller movie following David Dunn who survives an accident and realizes that he has some kind of power. So these movies, like I said, they're fine. They're not necessarily for me. They're not my favorite movies from M. Night, but I do appreciate the fact that Unbreakable is a classic and is very well done and very, very entertaining. I did actually watch it after I had saw Split. So I kind of had that connection already going into it. Um, it's definitely can be a standalone movie. And M. Knight claims that this is his favorite movie that he's ever made, which I think also audiences would a lot of people would agree with that as well. So next up we have Split, the middle of the trilogy from 2016. Now out of the three movies, I would say this one definitely leans way more psychological thriller. So it's a little bit more up my alley than the other two, which lean superhero action movie. This one of course is about a girl played by Anya Taylor-Joy who's abducted by a man who has 24 personalities. Now this is the first one that really made me question M. Night's usage of mental illness in his movies. And it's uh, that's when I started to notice a pattern and I did a whole rant many, you know, a long time ago, back in 2021, when Old came out. Um, his utilization of mental illness is just not my favorite. Despite that, I still find this movie really entertaining, especially given the ending. I don't think it's as bad as, you know, it's made out to be. However, I know there was a lot of criticism for the portrayal of DID in this movie. But it's definitely a great suspense movie. Uh, James McAvoy and Anya Taylor-Joy were fantastic in this. Okay, next up, I'm sure you've all been waiting to hear where Knock at the Cabin will be ranked compared to all of his other movies and it is right here in fifth place, fifth place, right? So this of course is his latest movie about a family who are confronted by four strangers who are given the impossible decision in order to stop the apocalypse. Of course, this is based on Paul Tremblay's book, Cabin at the End of the World. So this is another situation where it wasn't M. Night's original story. It's very few movies that he's done where it's not based on his original idea. Now, if you wanna hear all of my in-depth thoughts about this movie, including spoilers, I will link my review up here, of course. So I'm not really gonna delve into it now but it's just good. It's just good. It's very average compared to his other movies, I would say. It definitely, especially because I'm comparing it to the book, um, wanted so much more from it. All right, let's move on to his iconic movies. Obviously, you can narrow down which ones are left. Okay, in fourth place, we have Signs. 
obviously iconic. <laughs> it's about a retired reverend who lives with his two children and his brother on his farm when he discovers crop circles pop up in his fields. Now, I don't really feel like I need to explain why this movie is iconic and why I love it so much, but obviously the birthday scene in this movie, I think should go down in history as one of the scariest scenes in horror history. Now, arguably this movie is more thriller than anything. And I don't think that scene in particular or this movie in general ages too well because there's just something about experiencing an M. Night Shyamalan movie for the first time. And I think a lot of people remember their experience watching specifically the birthday reveal scene. Now, I love his take on an alien movie. Like I said before, he takes on a lot of different projects. He doesn't just, he's not a one trick pony. You know, he doesn't just do one type of thing. Although PG-13 thrillers are kind of what he's known for. But as far as like concepts and ideas, I think he's very creative and original. And I like that they use practical effects for the crop circles. So those were actually done for real because M. Night doesn't like to use CGI when possible, which I have to say personally, mediocre practical effects will always be superior to good CGI. That's just my opinion though. Okay, next up we have old. That's right, old is in my top three argue about it in the comments. I don't care. This is just one of his most fun and watchable movies in his whole collection, in my opinion. This movie is so good. Even if you love to hate it, you cannot deny that this movie isn't boring. Of course, this is about a group of people who are stranded on a beach at a resort and they start aging rapidly, which I know it sounds ridiculous. When I heard about the plot of this movie, I was like, that's asinine. That is so weird. And how is he going to execute that and not be stupid? <laughs> Granted, this is based on a graphic novel. So again, not his complete original idea, although he did change things up. To me, it sounds like the lamest concept out of all of his movies, but something about it is just so effective for me and just works. It is so entertaining. And I think it's his most rewatchable movie ever made ever, especially once you know the ending and you've seen all of it. It's just so rewatchable versus his other movies. Once you know the twist, it's a little, it takes away a little bit on the rewatch, you know? I feel like this one doesn't have that, but it is the definition of a love or hate movie from M. Night Shyamalan. If you look at the reviews from this, they are so polarized and it's kind of entertaining to see. And I get it. I understand the negativity. I'm just happy to be on the love side of this movie. Next up, we got The Village in second place. It's just a classic. It's so good. Again, I know it's probably a little controversial to put in second place, but I love this movie. So this is about a small village where their beliefs are being tested by a series of strange events. So now some people say that the twist in this is super, super obvious. And I understand, I kind of saw it coming as well. However, I don't think it takes away from the reveal or the enjoyment of this movie. I think this is his best cast movie. So just overall compared to all of his movies, this has hands down the best performances, the best cast, and this is his first attempt at a period piece thriller. Again, he likes to do a lot of creative things, a lot of different things. And so this was his period piece movie. Now I saw this before knowing everybody hated it. So when I found out people hated this movie, I was so confused as to why. And I still don't really know. It can't just be the twist. Why do people hate this movie so much? Okay, so lastly, in first place, we have The Sixth Sense. Now this is the first M. Night Shyamalan movie I ever saw. It's his first thriller movie ever made and his most popular movie. I like to count it as his first movie because the other two were a little bit smaller projects. And to me, it still remains his best movie ever made. Again, nothing can compare to seeing this movie for the first time. And I I hate that it was memed so much over the years because I excuse me, hold that thought. Obviously we know Toni Collette already is a great actress, but I think she's really underrated in this movie. And this is just, it's M. Night's best. I don't even need to explain why why it's iconic, it is just so good. And I don't think anything will top it. Maybe some are more entertaining, but I think this is his best executed and just his best concept overall. <laughs> Sorry, my baby's crying. <laughs> so please leave your rankings down below of M. Night Shyamalan movies. I have to wrap this up really fast because I have to go tend to my baby. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on my ranking and which do you think is my most controversial opinion in this video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you soon. Bye.